Okay, so if you don't know my history, um, you're new to the channel, I used to do construction now, and when I said I used to, um, I dabbled in a little bit of everything, kind of like what I did with automotive. Uh, when I built my house, I poured the concrete, I framed it, put the windows in, did the roof, did the electricity. Uh, I didn't do the plumbing because um, you never have enough fittings with you, and I didn't feel like driving to town 20 times. Anyway, I'm gonna go back to, um, <laughs> it's a funny story, and <laughs> this is a perfect video for it. When I was on my own, um, I worked out of my old shop. I had a little two, two car garage and I had a few tractors in the yard that I was working for for a customer. Right at that time, I was in construction during the summer. I turned a lot of wrenches in the winter. I worked for another contractor. He did concrete, but he was a smart contractor. He never actually showed you how to do everything 100%, just enough so that you couldn't go on your own. Um, one of those things was concrete and he'd let you run the trowel, but he wouldn't tell you how to do it. So um, I, we did a bunk, bunker silo, the floor didn't have to be perfect. I ran the trowel for a bit. Uh, I had it pretty good, I watched them because you, you can't stop it from spinning left to right. You just kind of lean on the handles uh, one way or another. And I had it for about, uh, about good 30 seconds and then it got away on me and then I got yelled at. That was uh, exactly what he wanted, keep me scared from doing it, but I just kind of watched and paid attention. When I was working on those tractors, I had a guy come in and um, I just finished a little outhouse on a barn and um, a little electrical room on the side of a chicken barn. And I did a little bit of concrete on the bottom and I used a hand trowel just to smooth it. It was only like 12 feet wide and four feet deep or five feet deep, something like that. And the customer said, can I buy one of those tractors or the guy off the road? And I said, no, they're not for sale. Uh, they're for customers. And he looked in the back of the truck and he saw the hand trowels for concrete. He goes, oh, you do concrete? I said, yep. He goes, okay, I need you to pour the floor in my barn. I said, sure, absolutely. I figured one of these fly-by-nighters never hear from him again anyway. I just say yes. Um, he called about a month later and said, hey, uh, all the rebar is laid, ready for the concrete. So um, I said, oh, okay. So I, got, I called a buddy of mine. He did concrete 10 years before that. I said, hey, can you help me with this floor? He goes, that's been a long time since I did concrete. He's like, not, he was a siding guy. <laughs> and uh, we, we, go, <laughs> we go to pour the floor. Um, and it's going good. We've got it all level. We, we worked hard. We know how to level the concrete and, and we're just waiting for it to dry. It was taking a long time to dry. The owner went to town, grab a case of beer. He's like, ah, grab some beer while we're waiting for the concrete to dry. And concrete's one of those things. It's gotta be ready, it's gotta be ready. Um, but there's a small window of when it's the right time to auger. The owner's uncle was there. Uh, his health was not with him. <laughs> he couldn't really do anything. So, okay, well, we're gonna fire up the power trial because um, the concrete has to be ready. So we're flicking the switch on the, on the engine. We're pulling and pulling. Stupid power trial won't, won't start. We're panicking. And then the, uh, the uncle goes, isn't the on off on the handle? We're like, oh yeah, it is. So we, we flick it in the on position. The power trial just augers a hole into the concrete. Concrete's flying everywhere. We're panicking. We take the trowel, throw it on the grass. Both of us, our hands and knees. We're throwing the concrete back, sweating buckets. We go back, got it all back to where it looked uh, uh, decent. Sit back on the picnic table just as the owner drives in. And he's like, concrete's not ready yet, eh? We're like, nope. <laughs> and the uncle's like, these guys have never poured concrete before in their life. <laughs> but anyway, we poured the concrete, like we waited, we got on there with the trowel, it turned out really good. Super happy with it. One of us did the outside, the other guy was troweling. And when we were done, the customer was standing at the front and he goes, you know what, you guys do really good work. He goes, I would hire you again. And I said, well, to be honest, this is the best floor I've ever poured. <laughs> And after that, I just did random concrete floors. Um, as a construction worker, I always did one roof a year because it helps you appreciate all your other work. And last summer, one of my old customers asked me to help pour a floor again. And uh, I, I, take, I will not get on a roof anymore, but I figure, you know what, I'll do a concrete floor. I haven't done a floor in a while. So I'm not a professional by any means, but this was actually a floor in a building that I built years before already. I built that in 2008, so 10, 11 years ago. So this is the, actually the second barn that uh, I ever built. And 
Um, funny story with this one is uh, the house that the, is on this farm is pretty much the same setup as what our house is, and we knocked on the door and asked if we could get a, a tour of their house so we could figure out what we wanted to build. And um, we sat down with them and, yeah, we're going to build. And this was probably five years before I actually built the house. In that meantime, I did a, a renovation on uh, their shed across the road because they kept buying bigger boats, so I had to put a bigger door in. They were happy with that, so they asked me to build this barn. One of the first in our area that was open on the entire uh, load-bearing wall, so that's all steel I-beams and then uh, braces on that. Problem with having the wind um, coming in and the doors open all the time is that it acts like a giant airplane wing. So you got your air going over top of the roof and then your air coming in. There are a couple issues I had with the engineer was his idea to keep the building from falling down was to put all these little hurricane clips in there because it's, it's a concrete footing with um, just a sill plate on top and then your studs on top of that. He's telling me the sheer value of each one of these nails and he needed to have 10 nails in there. I'm like, well, if you put a 10 nails in there and a square inch of wood like that, all you're gonna do is splinter the wood. So um, instead I ran these cables, uh, it's time to tighten them up again, I see. <laughs> but uh, I ran cables from the top plate all the way down to the anchor bolts. And uh, we've done that on a bunch of buildings actually because a lot more of these went up afterwards. So today we're gonna pour a floor and uh, concrete's just rolling in now. So we got our boots on and uh, start laying some concrete. Here we go. So pouring the floor is just like any other job. If you're painting a car, you make sure that the bodywork is done proper and your paint job will turn out good. If you're building a house, you make sure that your basement is square and your house will turn out square. If you're pouring a floor, you gotta make sure that your base is good. Now, when I built the building, it was meant mainly for food storage, whether it was hay or I don't know what exactly they had in there. They used one inch stone. And the reasoning for that is if it was any smaller, then it could get in the forks in the bucket and the cows would eat the stones. And they were, they have a beautiful farm. That's stuff that they kept in mind. So basically chalk your outline of the height with a good slope on there that if there is any moisture in there, it runs out, it doesn't stay inside. Um, put your footings to your height, pour it, lay your mesh, make sure that you have somebody dedicated to pull the mesh into the middle of the concrete, which is where it gets the strongest. These customers like to go a little overboard. They poured six inches of concrete, which is not necessary at all. I poured four and a half, five inches in my floor and I've had excavators on here and the floor didn't crack. It's gotta be ready, right? But basically what you want is to push on it and not just leave a little bit of fingerprints. That should be pretty good. So we'll see how this works out. All right, so almost a year later, and uh, <laughs> so far so good. Um, they're putting it to good use. They got it right full of chopped straw, and I don't even know what that is. Some type of new bedding. Man, I'm too far out of the uh, out of the farming scene. Um, trying to knock the building down already, and not successful. So that's good, and uh, yeah. I don't see any cracks, but they cut the concrete. I usually don't do shop floors because every concrete floor will crack, but the, the point of cutting it is so that the cracks go in the cut. But uh, yeah, nice finished product and nice to see that they're putting it to use. So yeah, um, not that I pour concrete every day and uh, not that I want to, but it's nice to do it once in a while. and figure out what a good hard day's worth of work is. So. Um, a lot of things have changed in the concrete industry since I really have done any concrete, which is 10 years ago. Things like using fiberglass in the concrete. Um, the artwork and the polishing that's gone into concrete is amazing nowadays. I poured this floor in my shop. I poured my basement and my house. I used ICF in the uh, basement walls and we got an epoxy floor in the garage. You can check that video out as well where they polish the floor threw down flakes and put an epoxy on top. That's a nice way to uh, 
keep the dust down, keep it clean, and it really adds a nice uh, texture and feel to the garage. We added some beams and that in there as well. We will be doing more concrete around the house. We'll be doing some pathways in that, experimenting maybe with some stamped concrete or some colored concrete, who knows? Uh, right now it's not in the budget, but basically this video was just me getting out of the shop for a day, pouring concrete pad in a building that I built. A little bit of sentiment there. That was my second building that I ever put up as a uh, construction owner worker on my own guys expand your horizons have some fun um if your buddy has in a, is in a different trade than you are and you've got a, a day off or a holiday go join them have some fun there's a lot of different trades out there i like to dabble in a little bit of everything thanks for watching um stay filthy here we go